Hello, Trev here from Trev Bees. Today we're going to talk about my toolbox. I take this to my bee yard or beehives every time I visit them. This old box started off life as a, cha uh, as a chainsaw box. I used to carry all my chainsaw gear in it. Had many lives uh, uh, over the years, now it's my bee box. What I want to do is go through this and show you what I take to a bee yard. If I can pick the whole lot up, it weighs about 10 kilos, uh, take it to the bee yard and I have everything that I need in here to look after the bees, regardless of what I find, apart from obviously spare boxes and such like. Most beekeepers actually carry all this stuff somewhere, but usually it's in, the, in their vehicle or somewhere else, maybe left at home. When they get to the bee yard, they want something. You can't do it, can't do anything. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go through the box so I can show you what I've got. Just tip it up on a bit of an angle to make the photography a little bit easier. Most important thing, of course, is the smoker and the hive tool. And they fit inside my metal toolbox in here so that when I put the smoker in here, it's hot, it's insulated by the box, it doesn't set on fire. I have a little wooden cork that I make that I stuff in the end of the smoker to stop, put the smoker out. I carry a, an old skinning knife and I use that for cutting out drone cell, the drone um, cells that are built into my drone trapping frame. You can use a hive tool instead of this. I just like to do that. carry some varroa treatments. I inspect a lot of people's hives uh, and sometimes I need to put in treatments for them at the same time. So I carry those. I don't use any organic, uh, non-organic treatments of my own. This is my butane lighter for lighting my smoker. And today it doesn't want to go. Simply like that, I can light the smoker in a few seconds, turn it off, and away it goes. Carry an old ice cream container. And this has got my bits of wax, mostly propolis, that I throw in here. I don't like leaving it around the yard. And an ice cream container, when this is full, is worth about $100 when I sell it as propolis. So when you're throwing it away on the yard, it takes a lot to make a, an ice cream container full, but worth money. I carry a frame grip. This means I can pick up a frame out of the hive, particularly at honey uh, harvest time. I can sweep the bees off the frames and I can do it all one handed. I carry a set of digital scales. This is particularly useful when I'm checking my noop yard. I can come in behind the hive, pick it up, and I can tell exactly how heavy 
that nuke colony is. Most people just guess the weight, and unfortunately, your guess is not usually that good. I carry a little felt pen so that I can write the weight and the date of that nuke. So when I go back next week, I can tell exactly whether that nuke has increased or decreased in weight and whether I need to feed it or to look after it, take some action, whatever. Otherwise, it's guesswork. These cost 20 bucks at JCAR's, not very much at all. Felt pen has lots of other uses as well. If I find queen cells, emergency cells, whatever, in a, on a frame, I can actually mark the frame exactly where the queen cell is. So when I come into the hive next time, I will be able to see it straight away. I won't have to go through the whole hive looking for it. Carry a box of little bucket of nails around. I use these to fix up frames and some, sometimes it break. Or when I'm putting the varroa strips in the hive, the varroa strips have got a little hole in the top. I put a nail through there. Like so, and I can suspend that between the frames. A lot easier than using these silly pop out things that they've got, which makes the frames uh, difficult to put back into place. Carry a little scraper, and I use that for cleaning the bottom of the of the floor of the. Uh, the hive, so I can clean all the debris out and such like. Got a little magnet on there that sits there so it can't fall off. These are my bee brushes, just cheap disposable ones that I buy from Bunnings. I don't like using bee brushes because I find that the bees don't like it. They get quite upset when you're brushing bees. They're happy to be shaken off the frames, but sometimes we have to brush, and so I use these. I find that the standard long bee brush that you buy is such poor quality, all the bristles fall out, and then I end up with bristles in the honey. That annoys me. An uncapping fork, and I use this for uncapping drones just to see the grower levels that are. I have in the hive. Carry a bit of air freshener, just odorless, natural one. If I have to amalgamate two lots of bees, sometimes I use a paper method. Most times I just give them a quick spray with some air freshener, sorts it out. I just need to make some room. Just trying to show all the stuff that I carry. This has got a bit of sugar water in it. Does the same job as the air freshener. If I need to amalgamate some bees, I just spray a bit of sugar water over them. A little fishing knife. Found this on the street, believe it or not. This I use for cutting out queen cells. So if I get a queen cell and I want to use it, I can actually cut the queen cell out nice and carefully with this, it's quite sharp, and then I can make a split with that queen cell. I like to mark all of my queens, so I have a queen marking kit. There's five colours, white, yellow, red, green and blue. For the each years I've written them on here so I know which they are. The queen marking kit comes in these little bottles with a little plastic wiper inside. 
So it only ends up with a little bit of paint on the end. That, believe it or not, is green. Once you mix the paint up, it goes green. I had to make a little carrier up for the current bottle. You get the current year's bottle. Because when you do that with a little wiper that's got on there, you pick the bottle up, even though the, it's undone. And when you've got the queen in one hand, you have a bit of trouble holding the bottle. So I made this little block up because I'm a wood turner and I can, and I can sit that on there and I can pick that up and I now have the perfect little bubble of blue paint sitting on the end of my finger. I can put it back in there and do the, and put the, let the queen go. Several other options for queen marking. This is a twink whiteout pen, auto correcting thing for typing or whatever. And these things are Uni Posco pens. They have a nice size nib and they're a paint. You can hear the little ball bearing in there. You need to give these a good shake first. And the way I use these. You can't dab this on the back of the queen, otherwise you're going to squash it. So on the end of the frame, or on the box, I make a little mark to make sure that I've got the paint flowing. You see that? I've got a little blob of paint there. I can then go and pick that blob of paint up and just gently touch that, and I now have a nice, neat, Mark for the queen. I always like to do it on the hive because every now and again these actually get pressure in them. And on a hot day, when you go to get the pen to run, it can actually squirt ink, uh, paint all over the place. It can make quite a mess. And unfortunately, if it's on the queen, you might kill it. Don't want to do that. This is a one hand queen catcher designed for catching and marking the queen. Sit that over the top of the queen, slide the little floor around. This has got queen excluder on it so the workers can get out, queen car. And then you can slide the little barrel up on the inside with your thumb. It's got a stop on it so you can't kill the queen, you can't squeeze her um, too badly, but you immobilize her and she gets immobilized on the top in the grooves. She always ends up lined up with the grooves. That's just the way it works. And then you can carefully put a blob of paint on her, let the pressure off, and I can sit that on top of the frames until the paint's dry at which stage I can just carefully let her out. Sometimes I just catch the queen by my hand. I usually find that's a lot quicker. But this makes a neater job. This is an old pill bottle which I've drilled some holes in. Occasionally, and quite often, I find a second queen within a hive. And what I'll do is I'll catch that queen and put her in here and I'll just keep her aside. Maybe put a couple of escorts with her. Just in case. I'm going to use her from somewhere else. I also carry a couple of spare queen cages. I need to replace these because the little end caps have actually broken off. And if I want to make a split, I can do that. With the queen. Carry a bit of lavender oil, essential oil. 
I get a bit grumpy about the ants on top of the hive. Put a couple of drops on on that on top of the hive mat, and that'll get rid of the ants. Last couple of items. This is a frame holder. It sits on the side of the frame, on the side of the hive, and I can hang the frames on here. I hate sitting frames in front of the hive. If the queen happens to be on there and you've missed her, she can fall off onto the grass. I'm going to demonstrate that in another video. The last thing I have in here is I have three sets of curtains like these. These I use to cover over the top of the hive if it's a cold day, windy, whatever. I can just put that over the top and that'll keep all those bees quiet. Time for another video. That's my toolbox. I take it to all the bee yards. No, sorry, one more item. This little tool bottle has got some craft matches in it. These are matchsticks without a match head on them. I always carry these in the toolbox. Sometimes I don't have access to a little twig or some such thing. And if in the event of suspecting or finding American Falbury, I use these to dip in to check out for ropiness. I keep quite a collection of them. Used a few over the years. Found a few hives, unfortunately, with foul brood. But I've always got a clean stick to mark with, with the check with. That's my toolbox. Thanks for watching again. Remember, check us out on Crabs Bees on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel. We'll catch you around.